We are Drunk Uncle. I'm Peyton. I'm Will. Hey, I'm Tyler. I play uh, electric guitar uh, and backup vocals. And uh, I'm Jake. I play drums. Uh, we're Drunk Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I've always kind of dreamed of it. Um, I always wanted to have a project, do a thing, uh, but it kind of never panned out for like the first 25 years of my life. It just never, I never let it be a priority until these guys came along. Yeah, um, same. I mean, like I uh, grew up listening to a bunch of like, you know, 80s music and like a bunch of metal and stuff like that. And uh, my parents took me to shows uh, fairly young, you know, like middle school and stuff like that. And I always wanted to like get up on stage and play music. Um, and yeah, I couldn't like, I never figured out how to start a band. So I tried to do like solo electronic music for a while and that like never panned out live. And then I met this guy and then, uh, well, I joined a band before that, but then I met this guy and we started this band and it was awesome. So yeah, same thing. I just always wanted to do it. Uh, I had a big brother um, who was uh, really into punk music um, and was really good at art and was just kind of an inspire, inspiring person in my life. And um, so I got my first guitar. He taught me how to play power chords and, you know, in like one sitting taught me a bunch of Green Day songs and Weezer songs and other uh, easy four chord stuff um and i kept playing uh, i think i was like 13. um so it's been a while since then and during uh lockdown in 2020 jake and i uh our, our old friends he was playing with these other guys and invited me to come jam with them and we had great chemistry so i've been playing with them for the last couple years uh yeah i uh my dad was a musician uh his dad was a musician um I learned how to play guitar through uh, old Metallica riffs, which was the only thing that we were allowed to listen to at my dad's house. Uh, it was just the Kill 'Em All album at max volume. Um, and uh, yeah, Tyler and I go way back. Um, you know, played bass for him like at one show, I think, um, but way back in the day. Uh, and then I was in a, a couple bands in Austin and uh, moved to San Marcos for school. Responded to a Craigslist ad with these two jokers uh, and ended up, um, yeah, this is, we're, we're on three years, which is in emo years, like 15 years. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the emo scene and like the punks and hardcore scene bands typically die out. So we've, uh, we've been at it, I guess it's 2019, uh, brought, like Tyler said, brought him on around 2020. And then, um, yeah, since then hitting it hard, released a split with our buddies Breathwish out of Houston and then released our uh our, our freshman LP with Count Your Lucky Stars. It's called uh, Look Up. Was it March? So, Scott, it seems like it's been out for like a thousand years, but it really is only like eight months old, you know? So. Uh, but Craigslist, it works. Craigslist, don't, well, don't not Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> we went through like two other drummers yeah, we before, two drummers. before we, we caught this guy, and we didn't think it'd work because he drove it. We live in Round Rock, so he's driving from San Marcos to... Now, now. Round Rock, like that's so long on I-35. It's called dedication. Okay. Multiple times a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was very inspired. Yeah, there. for sure. All of our, all of I guess, all of our different backgrounds, and all of us to some degree are multi instrumentalists, which helps. You know, like guitar was my first instrument, but I play drums in this band, and we all help each other like write stuff, and we have ideas and riffs and concepts and skeletons and. You know, so like that, that was cool in that regard to kind of have everybody be a part of the writing process. And that's just how we've flowed, I guess, since we've been a four piece. Next question. <laughs> All right, this is Who is the drunkest uncle of the band? Oh, God. As of uncle. right now? Or? As of right now. Oh, no, yeah. It, no is Tyler the only uncle? So by default, Tyler is the drunkest uncle. Um, drunkest member but the drunkest member i feel like we take turns at doing that like yeah. in different stages we'll all go hard in different ways yeah. 
Well, we just got off tour a few months ago. We were all very drunk Me and Will gave each other uncles. Me and Will. These there's two went. There's, there's, there's video footage of them, like, around town in Denton at 2 p.m. being like, where's the bars? Yeah. <laughs> it's like in the square well, in I Denton. Just, yeah, <laughs> Bad yeah. boys a tour. Bad boys a tour. So right now, uh, these two are holding the crown. Although you've got a I'm trying to sparkling be a, water here. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's going to default to me here pretty soon. <laughs> it did last night. Well, he's the youngest, so he's got a lot of time. He's got to catch up. Catch up. Yeah. That's true. I have the liver of a stallion. <laughs> For now. Yeah. Well, you get, I was going to say, both of us got started pretty early in our lives. So we don't have to get into that. So it's like, we don't, I don't think we have livers of stallions. No, maybe like a mule. Yeah, <laughs> like a workhorse, like a Clydesdale. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's going to give any moment, but it just like stays like I was that. born and bred to live like this, you know. Say, woke up in the morning, he fished Yeah, yeah, all well, blood. I don't know. <laughs> Um, yeah, so next thing coming up for Drunk Uncle, uh, we have a four-way split coming out. Um, Kerosene Heights reached out and, you know, uh, got us on board along with uh, Rose Ceremony and Thorn Tire. So we're super excited about that. We got a couple songs on there. Um, that should be coming out in November 2022. Um, so maybe it'll be out by the time folks are watching this. And uh, next weekend we're getting together to work on writing our second LP. Um, and so that'll probably be much later. But new songs and things that we'll be playing at shows and stuff in the near future. Uh, a couple new songs we're playing tonight. So uh, yeah, lots of stuff coming that we're excited about. Uh, as Tyler mentioned, Rose Ceremony is a band that is out of Austin. Um, they're the only other local band on that split with us. The other bands are from uh, Georgia, North Carolina, and, G and Georgia, Asheville, which is pretty cool. But. Uh, Austin music scene for emo right now is really killer. Um, band we played with yesterday called Capture Phase, uh, Rose Ceremony, like we mentioned, Boyd, Menwano. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, people make me make things. Yeah. Rookie Park, like Austin music scene is blooming uh, with emo in regards to emo. So be on the lookout for all things emo um, in Austin. It's it's never really been. Uh, recognized for that, but I think that's going to change soon. Yeah, it's not, it's not just psych rock and indie and blues and R&B. you got a bunch of, you know, uh, angsty, miserable young people out here. I guess. Well, young-ish. Uh, no, I'm pushing 30. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm... See, cut, <laughs> cut that! Cut it! Uh, no, it's super, super excited to have the split out because the way that, like, I guess content moves, we've talked about this, like... I feel like you always have to be putting something out. And so we're really, this split is like our, um, we're super excited to have these two songs out, but we're really looking forward to getting back into writing because we were playing a bunch of shows after the album dropped with South By and then tour. And then all these shows we've played, this show we'll play. And then we're going to enter like a little writing hibernation mode where we're just trying to be creative again, instead of like doing stuff, instead of performing, because we've been performing so much. Um, and then, you know, entering this weekend or next weekend with our little writer's retreat, Bonnie Bear style. It's not a cabin in the woods. It's a ranch in Tyler, Texas. But uh, um, er, there will be trees and I guess a, a, like a beer or two or ten, you know. <laughs> Will's like, uh, We're gonna have an yeah, we'll just, I just like, just a Miller High Life like that's as big as a grain silo. <laughs> It's like 36 feet tall, and you just kind of like head of spigot on the it. The idea is we empty it by the end, and then we beat the crap out of it. Like yeah, yeah. It's like, a, well, it's like, what does hamsters drink out of? <laughs> it's like, well, it's coming through the window of a ranch, like a big metal tube. Will's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's the uninspired riff. Go take a sip from the fucking. Yeah, yeah. Silo. Hey, hey, man, you're really just off it today. Go get a silo sip, buddy. Um, yeah, so we're super excited for that. That's probably. Again, going to be a little while, um, but uh, Counting Lucky Stars was 
really great. Um, it's an incredible label. If you haven't heard of it, um, please go check out. Like every band on the roster is so solid. I want to make sure to call out like Count Your Lucky Stars has the like so many different bands that are like on the cusp of the next wave of you know obviously this genre, but like anything like alternative. Like they have so many. They've got fuzz bands. They've got like you know more like indie indie pop emo pop bands, and then they've got like bands like us. So make sure to check them out. There, and if you like, don't know where to start with emo. That's a good place. They've been legends. The archive, the archive yeah. exactly. They've been putting out stuff since like 2010, uh, like Empire Empire, which is the head of the label's band. Tiny but all, Parts Tiny there. Moving Parts was on there. Um, Free Throw was on there. Free Throw was Snowing. on there. Snowing. Yeah. That's where you should really. Yeah, yeah. Those like twinkly emo screamy bands. Really, kind of the stuff that inspired us. And now, homework assignment for anybody watching. Give up. Because no. <laughs> <laughs> in this life, this town, you can't win. <laughs> no. Um, so, for anybody that, like, wants to do music, you are in high demand. Like, making a project, we, we put together a lot of shows, a lot of house shows and things, and we're always looking for acts. Like, way more people can't do shows than can do shows and if you're available you're going to catch shows and you're going to be in demand and people are going to want to hear your band just keep doing it like don't stop um if you be consistent don't get stuck in like this has to be perfect release the thing and go on to the next thing because you're just going to get better and better uh by doing that uh that's something we learned if you listen to our first ep we love it but it's scrappy as hell it was recorded like in the worst ways possible, but we love it, uh, and we've yeah. we've grown since then. And yeah, it it really works like that. Just don't stop. And um, Peyton mentioned consistency. Uh, as far as that goes, like that doesn't necessarily mean you have to practice like every day with everybody, but like get on a schedule, like once a week, once every two weeks, something like that. Because when it becomes a regular thing, it it's not like. It, it's not like an event anymore. It's just something that you're doing, and that helps me personally, like, solidify, you know, the songs in my mind. Because if I know I'm going to be practicing them at the same time every week, I can, you know, run through them the day before, and, you know, maybe I'll come up with some ideas. And then, you know, at practice, if we already have the songs down, we can write new stuff. So, yeah, consistency is, like, a huge thing, I think. Like piggybacking on that, it's like integrating it into your life. So it's just part of the, like it's, uh, and I think we've, we've done this at different times where it's like try to write a song every day. Just challenge yourself with small things and don't overthink like the, the finished product of that. It's just the exercise. It's the muscle of, you know, getting together to play on a, on a regular basis, writing new things, recording new things. I, I would definitely say that as like a musician, in 2022 versus other times in history, uh, knowing how to record stuff will go a long way. Because if you can, you know, even just record yourself on your phone and share it or whatever, um, it just keeps like the, uh, the it's like a chain reaction, you know? Uh, that's how we, one of the ways that we write is to, you know, fuel each other with ideas. Like Jake said, all four of us come up with ideas and we just throw it into the pot and mix it up. And, um, you know, so, be um, uh, prolific like that. Just put the next thing out. Yeah, also, like, something that I had told, I remember we were kind of, like, almost, like, bullying Joey into releasing Rookie Park stuff. <laughs> like, don't be afraid to suck. Like, we've had shows where we're like, God, that was a fucking incredible show. And then we've had shows where we're like, I don't want to play music. <laughs> not, not, I don't want to play music anymore, but like, just like, man, that was, and it's like, we've also had practices where it's like, the energy is incredible. Man, I wish we could have captured that and been playing in front of hundreds of people. And then we've had practices where it's like, I don't know if everybody's tired. Like, don't be, if you haven't released anything yet and you're on like the genesis of Project X, Y, or Z, 
Like understand that like with any creative endeavor, with any, any endeavor at all, like there are going to be times, especially starting out where like something might not sound like it does in your head, especially if you're working with like, uh, you know, creatives and people, you know, um, not having like a ton of capital up front to start with like the best, you know, recordings. Don't worry about that. Like, you know, we're like, be concerned with like, are you proud of what you produced? It's not, it might not be polished, it might not be perfect, but like, don't be afraid to suck. Don't be afraid to be like, oh, that was okay. Cause that is a part of like, you know, the process of like, we've had a label put us out. We have vinyl, you know, being sold like all over the place. But like we've, in the genesis of this project, I was playing on a crash cymbal that was like, what was it? Like a, <laughs> a 12 inch, that was just terrible. Our kit was do like awful and like, over time you invest back in the band over time you have like successes and failures and things and all of that progress isn't linear in anything and music is a part of that yeah and you're gonna have these moments where you write a song and you're like oh this is really fucking good like i'm really proud of myself for doing this and then you're gonna listen to it the next day and be like oh this is so mediocre and like I'm not a creative person. That happens to me all the time. That happens to everybody. You just have to stick with it. Like it's it's always uh, trust your initial gut on it. And sometimes you'll filter it out over time, but um you're you being creative is good enough. It really is. And if you're in Austin and you're making music, hit us up. We'll yeah. we'll do our best to like fucking promo you or record some things if you need it, whatever. Like we want to be active and helping. That's that. Drunk Uncle, and we're next up.